everyone, it's Michael. And one of the questions I've been receiving super frequently lately has been, can you please do an updated watering and fertilizing video? And it hadn't occurred to me until just now that my system has changed pretty significantly. And I think the reason I overlooked that is because during my monthly orchid collection updates, I always start the update by telling you exactly what has changed in my system. But of course, over the course of an entire year, that can be kind of hard to track all of the changes. So that being said, I am going to um, use this opportunity, I mean, it is January, to recalibrate and show you what I am doing and why I'm doing it. Um, I'm still gonna leave up the old video. I do think it's constructive to see what I was doing before, why I changed it, um, and just kind of see the general evolution of things. So that'll be part one, this will be part two, and if it ever changes again, there'll be a part three. Um, so without further uh, lead in, let's just go ahead and jump in and I'll show you exactly what that system looks like. So I figured the best way to do this is with you directly over my shoulder. Now I'm gonna begin the process of preparing my nutrient solution that's going to fertilize the orchids. And I wanna give you a snapshot of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So to start, I'm gonna take this container. This is one of the ball jars that you can get at Target. They're like. I think like $8, I don't know off the top of my head, but I do love having a non-leaching um, mixing vessel. So this is one of my favorite things to use. So I'm going to use distilled water. Now, if you have any questions about why I'm using what type of water I'm using throughout this process, I'm gonna link my three-part mini series on water type, pH, and TDS below. But the reason I'm using distilled water is it has a TDS or total dissolved solids or salts of zero. So it's a really great starting point because there is no um, solid content inside of the water, which is really good for orchids. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. Now this container is one half gallon, so it allows me to mix small batches, which is really, really useful. So now let's measure our starting points in terms of pH and TDS. So I've got my handy dandy little toolkit here. So we'll start with TDS. Turn it on and make sure it's registering at zero. Perfect. So our starting point is zero ppm. And the starting point for this water is zero ppm. Okay, perfect. So that's exactly where we wanna be. Give this a quick shake off. Now let's measure its starting point in terms of pH, because we know that orchids are looking for an overall pH of right around 5.5 is kind of the sweet spot. So I'm gonna make sure that this is reading at one to start, and it is and then I'm gonna measure the pH. So the starting point in terms of pH for the distilled water is 7.1, which is obviously higher than the 5.5 sweet spot that we're looking for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mix the nutrient solution. So what I'm going to do to impact both of those numbers, because the target zone for me in terms of TDS is anywhere between like 75 up to around 100, 125. Um, you wanna keep it a really dilute nutrient solution because orchids in general are not heavy feeders. Um, and if you have more than that, it can start to create mineral buildup, it can start to create all sorts of toxicity problems. So you wanna keep it low. Also, I wanna get the pH down as well so that the orchids can actually absorb the nutrients that are being provided to it. So I have figured that the best way to do this is to use a dropper as opposed to a measuring spoon. Because every time I use a measuring spoon, I always end up over portioning, over spilling, whatever the problem is. But this gives me a really controlled method. Now I'm using the Dynagro Orchid uh, Pro solution, which I love. It has all the macro and micronutrients that our orchids need. So this is, this is my favorite one to use. It's a urea-free formula. Um, it has all the essential trace elements of what it needs. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this guy. My plants have responded really positively to it. Now it recommends mixing half teaspoon per every gallon of water. So since we have a half gallon, in theory, it would mean that we needed one quarter teaspoon. But I figured out that one quarter teaspoon equates to 30 drops in this. And that was coming in with a TDS of around 175 to 200. Too high, I didn't like it. So I'm cutting back the recommended dose, which is pretty common in terms of how we feed our orchids. So I found that the sweet spot for me is 15 drops. And when I use this dropper, which you can get at Target, again, two pack for like $2, um, it gives me a lot more control and I can portion exactly what I need as opposed to spilling. So 15 drops is a sweet spot, let's go. All right, 15 drops have been placed into the water. I'm gonna go ahead and mix everything up. So now that it's been mixed up, let's take a measurement of exactly where we are. So let's get out our TDS monitor again. Starting point at zero. Let's see what we've got. Oh. 
All right, guys, so now we have a TDS of 93, which is just where I like it. So that's just perfect. Now let's check out the pH. Make sure it's coming in at one to start, which it is. And now the pH is reading at 4.5. So this is a little bit more acidic than it should be. However, we have to remember that LECA does raise the pH of a nutrient solution. So I did a video on this, I'll link it below, but it was entirely inconclusive. But I do know as a general rule of thumb that the LECA raises the pH. So I am not concerned that this is slightly lower than the 5.5 sweet spot. So this is exactly the nutrient solution I want. Now that we've got that all taken care of, I'm gonna clean up my workspace. I'm gonna grab some orchids that need to be watered and we'll start the process of flushing the semi-hydroponic systems. All right, friends, we are back and with an assortment of orchids that need to be watered. So you might be wondering, are you just gonna take that nutrient solution and top off the water reservoir? And the answer is absolutely not. That is one of the worst things that you can do for your orchids because this system requires that you flush the entire container every single time you water. And the reasoning for that is because of the wicking properties of the LECA, it's not just wicking up water, it's also wicking up nutrients. And if that nutrient solution gets to the top where the evaporative processes are happening, it can create mineral buildup, it can create salt buildup, and that can start to burn the root tips. So in order to avoid that, and in order to consistently resolve that potential mineral buildup, you have to fill the entire system all the way to the top, and then allow it to flush everything out of the drainage holes. And what that does is it kind of redissolves any of those minerals and flushes it downward. So you press reset on the system every single time you do this. Now for a while I was doing this with distilled water because I was so paranoid, but actually the tap water isn't terrible. Um, my tap water wouldn't be good to water my orchids with, but in terms of its TDS and pH, it's not gonna impact it too terribly and it will help me efficiently resolve all of that mineral buildup. You wanna make sure you're going through this process in the morning. This is super, super crucial. And that's one of the reasons people always say water your orchids in the morning. Of course, it's not an absolute unbreakable rule, but the reason that we do this is it gives the orchids time to dry out in case you get water in any of the really critical spots. Now the critical spots would entail any tight area that can hold water and then create rot. So that's usually the crown of plants, um, the top of a pseudobulb where the leaves meet into a really narrow space. You also really want to avoid new growths. That's super important because they tend to rot out really quickly if water gets inside of them. I've had that issue happen one too many times. But even for things like these pseudobulbs, I'll take you in on this guy. I was a little careless with how I watered this one here and you can see right by my finger, a little browning, and that is rot that happened from water sitting in this leaf. So that's the reason we're careful. That's the reason we have to avoid doing that. Now I'm gonna begin the process of flushing each of these containers, and I'm gonna take great care to water just into the LECA and not into the plant itself. You always wanna avoid that. Now I'm gonna make sure the water is good and tepid because you don't wanna shock the root system with water that's too hot or too cold. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start rinsing. Now again, just into the LECA, not into the plant. Now I'm gonna allow this to fill up all the way to the top, and then I will just let the water flush out really quickly. All right, and just like so. So what I've done is I've effectively used that tap water flush to clear out all of the old nutrient solution that was left over in the water reservoir, but also to resolve any potential mineral buildup that may be accumulating from the upward movement of nutrient solution in the semi-hydroponic container. So the last thing that I did in this process is I went ahead and I tipped the orchid this way and allowed all of the remaining water to come out. And the reason I do that is I wanna leave this empty so it can be filled with nutrient solution. So rather than using the nutrient solution to complete the actual flush, you use the tap water to do that and then you just fill the water reservoir. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my watering can. I'm gonna fill it up with my pre-mixed nutrient solution. And I'm just gonna to top off the water reservoir. And that's pretty much the entirety of my watering and fertilizing routine. There is one minor exception and that's when you see mineral buildup. So I'm gonna bring my zygopedlum over so you can see what I'm talking about. 
But if you look at the drainage holes here, you can see a little bit of white buildup. And what that is, is that salt. I went back and forth a million and one times thinking, is that mold? Is that salt? Is it mold? Is it salt? It's salt. But in order to resolve that salt buildup, I water with just plain distilled. So I listen to each individual plant. If the plant has an established root system that can metabolize and use nutrient solution, I will always give it nutrient solution. I feed them at a constant feed. However, if I see this kind of mineral buildup, I will only use distilled water until it's resolved. But that is pretty much the entire system, guys. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. Don't forget to subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, guys.